All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Wanna slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Wanna slice, got to roll the dice. So is he still getting paid now? He's just, he just got this like two years. And he was getting like 22 years. And now, now Grant or or Gilbert is what uh, in the big three? Is he doing the big yeah, three this year? Yeah, he would you ever do the big three? Well, if I was a baller, I would. What's the man? What y'all see? What's gonna happen is they gonna end up doing big. They gonna do good, y'all. Cause it's it's it's, it's exciting. It's different. It's innovative. They going to the right cities. The tickets ain't through the roof yet. It's gonna blow up, man. You got the right players, bro. And it's in L.A. It's or, or do they travel? It's they everywhere, travel. bro. They, they came to Charlotte one year. They, they about to have one in Columbus. Yeah, yeah. they travel. And the, the big three is coming to Columbus. Yeah, Are they travel. live yet, though? What you mean? Like, because normally you just watch a pre-recorded of the no, game. Tele- television is not live yet. It's not. It's not live yet. But they right. travel. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, yeah. And they play the games like yeah. in different cities. We went so when they came to Charlotte, bro, and it was so dope, bro. Like they just a halftime show, the in between show, show all like celebrities around there. It's like a concert because so many artists are involved in it and investing in it. I always wonder, like, because when you watch it on TV, they, they obviously they got to make the court small because it's three mm-hmm. on three. Well, they gonna have court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the viewership, like if you were there, do you just feel like you everywhere you the nosebleeds and the shit? Nah, you know what? Because it hadn't t- taken off yet to where it's all the way up there. You know what gotcha, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah they, it's probably half a crowd right now. But nah, I thought it was, I thought it was super dope. It's almost like watching all the good basketball players at your high school going against each other. <laughs> I'm saying, if you could watch That's a game real. with Daquan Norris and Aaron versus Steve Wright. Mark Anderson. Mark Anderson yeah. and, you know what I'm saying, somebody else dope, and you just seeing them go at it, and you got, what, the four-point line? The four-point spot? Oh, they do got the four-point. The, the, yeah, the yeah. four-point shot. So I thought just it was a, interesting. Just imagine when Steph retired, though. That's true. That's <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nasty. When he get out there, yeah, he's gonna be gonna out be there nasty. going crazy. That's gonna we, be nasty. What's the? Uh, I mean, I think though, dope, we got bro. we got Greg Oden, Bonzi motherfucking well. That's playing this year. Yeah, yeah Jermaine yeah, O'Neal. Uh, <clears throat> he gonna be Steven injured. Jackson, <laughs> Carlos Boozer, Gilbert Arenas. Uh, who else? Joe Johnson, Kenya Martin, all Kenya the boys. A Metal War piece playing this year. Yep. Ron Art, aka Ron Artest. All of them, bro. Jermaine O'Neal back. Al Jefferson back. See? Bro, I love how all. you saying back, though. No, I'm saying back. <laughs> back from like that. Oh, okay. Back okay. from another season. Back from, you know what I'm saying, from retirement, whatever they were doing. Like. The Drew League. That was from the Drew League. The Drew League. That cold dude. Yeah, yeah. What? I think that's his nickname. I think because he be killing right. folks out there. Yeah, Frank they Blue. call Frank Lucas. Yeah. Oh, Blue like, Magic. Well, yeah, yeah, bro. They, I mean, brand name. I think I like it, man. Just me personally. I like innovative anything. Oh, I definitely fuck with the with the big three. I, I thought Master yeah. P was supposed to start something, but he I yeah. think he was going to include people women. that didn't make the league well, and he's women. Yeah, yeah, women. He's yeah. trying to make a unisex yeah, yeah, or whatever. He, got, he do got a uh, unisex league going on, yeah. but we we'll see if it grow. <laughs> They got to be some dogs. Yeah, I doubt it. Man. I mean, yeah. a girl comes to the hole on me, I'm throwing it. Bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, bro, right now. Hey, before we get too toxic, welcome back to the ITL let's podcast. Go, let's go. Uh, we on, we live. Yeah, welcome back to the ITL podcast. I go by the name Johnny Will. This is Nationwide Nate. And Cardi A can't cash in. And as always, thank y'all for tuning in to the Amateur Professionals. Today, we got joining us two time Super Bowl champion, my guy Nationwide's older brother. Nation got it, or so what we call you worldwide nation. Nation, <laughs> hey, that's cool, man. Call me dirtbag, you man. I'm always dirtbagging around here, man. You know how I do. You're a little bit more savage than little bro. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, this yeah. this this, this yeah. was like the quiet brother. He was almost like the middle child, man. I am so the middle child. you are the middle child. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah, know, I'm innocent one out of all of us. So, that, so if you're innocent, you know our brothers is bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was rough around the house for him, man. It was rough for him, but he good dude, man. He turned out all right, I guess, man. So if you saying fuck dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they said fuck cats. Right. Hey, 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 goddamn. All thing. bad. All, All bad. bad. <laughs> but I appreciate you joining us on the show. I, I, I appreciate y'all having it's, me. It's man. 100 plus episodes. It's a long time coming. Yeah. That's it, man. Man, I've been asking my brother, can I get on the show, man? He's he been spinning me, though, man. He's been, he been giving me the spin move, knowing he can't hoop, man. I, I believe it, though. <laughs> he can't hoop. He can't pump fake right. shit. Right, yeah. I, I believe it, though, because we like, yo, we're bro. Yeah. I told him I'm going to stay an extra day just so I can kick with y'all, man. <laughs> he be tripping. Sure, man. We appreciate it. He show you show up two hours later and shit. That's it. Dirt bag, man. <laughs> Dirt it's bag. all good, though. It's all good. I got some stories on you, though, so it's cool. Oh, that's where we're going to start then. That's where we're going to start. Give me a story. Hey, hey, give me a story. 
I got you. I, I, hey, right. hey, hey, hey. Don't Gary make me mad on the show here. Gary <laughs> Mount. I'm going to bring it out. No doubt. Gary so, Mount. So, Peep, though, here, here's what I always wanted to know yeah. because we all played Pee Wee football to start. Mm-hmm. You couldn't tell me I didn't have it. God damn it. I, I thought I was buried, God damn it. Yeah, yeah. And my daddy believed it too. Yeah, yeah. He, he believed it so much the pastor was calling me Emmett Smith. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was I was going. That's right. But then eventually you you look at fourth quarter of your senior year, you like, this is the last time I'm put on a jersey. Yeah. But for you, when did you feel like, all right, it's more than just a pipe dream? I actually got yeah. it. Man, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. It was eighth grade, man. I played at McFarland, and we went against Fairview, man. Anybody know the, hey, listen, anybody know the history of Dave? Fairview always been that team to beat. They always had the cutest girls, the best uniform, right. the best basketball team, Damn everything. Right, man. We and we had Miss Taylor. Now. Right, right, exactly. Miss Taylor, too. And everybody know McFarland was kind of like that ratchet. Dog school, you know, the, the rejects went to or whatnot or whatever. Hey, so like the dirty ass black and white unit. Right, yeah, hey, no doubt. Hey, I, <laughs> hey, I rep it, man. It molded me. So, man, we went up against Fairview, man. And I'm t- I kid you not, you can ask my brothers, my dad, everybody. I think I made every tackle of the first half. <laughs> Like, I know that sounds far-fetched. Now, this is middle I, school. Yeah, this is middle yeah, school. Now, yeah, don't yeah. get me wrong. It's middle school. It's eighth grade. But y'all got to understand how good Fairview was. Mm-hmm. You know, this is where Terry Pogue and all them big dogs went to. So, they was good, good. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And Christian Channels, all them dudes. So, I made every tackle of the first half. And I got an interception. ran it back about 20 yards and drugged the whole team for about another 10 yards. And everybody after that game asked me, dude, what high school are you going to? <laughs> like, who are you? Where you going? You put the cap on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm day. like, you know, sign of day say, I'm like, man, I'm going to Dunbar. It ain't no question for me. You know, this is what molded me. This is what molded me. Because everybody know McFarland was the old Dunbar. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, that's what molded me. The people that molded me and the, 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 the grind that I went through, even there, all that molded me. So, I knew I was going to Dunbar at the end. But, man, that was the game where I was like, dude, I might be a little bit better than some of these other people. See, it's interesting you said you made every tackle because if I was a scout, I had everything all wrong. Number right. one, I thought you was a basketball player because yeah, you're right. the first person I ever seen dunk in person. I went to a Dunbar Meadowdale game. Yeah. They threw it to you. You dunked. They threw it to Donovan. He dunked. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. He hooped. Oh, shit. Yeah. He hooped. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And then uh, to go to South Carolina and play yeah. college ball, I'm like, okay, he got to be playing DN or some shit. Yeah, yeah. And they like, nah, he, he uh, offensive line. So I'm way off on nah, what nah, you, know, you know what? You still good. Yeah. Let me tell you what all happened with that real quick brief. I ain't like basketball at all. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What it was is the, the power of peer pressure. Just like all y'all homeboys, y'all did stuff because your homeboys did it. I only played basketball because all my friends did. So, you know, you, I'm Don, like you said, Donovan, Vic, uh, uh, Doug, Shout Akbar. Out to the all, yeah, all the cats from Dunbar. Trey, you got to remember, my boys is like Trey Coffee, Moog, uh, all the older guys ahead of me, my brother Cocky, all them. Shout out to the plug. Right. The trees before the game. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> hey, I just played ball because, I mean, you know, being in a black school, that's all it was to do. If you ain't played ball, none of the girls wanted you. Nobody loves you. No way. Fact, so that's why I did shot put yeah. so I can stay in the hotels. Right, right. You know <laughs> I just played ball because of all them. You know what I'm saying? And, um, uh, as far as football wise, I was at the end, yeah. and you know what I'm saying. As I got to offensive line, as I got to college, down south is totally different than up north. Is you know it's regional ball, the SEC. They're a lot faster and quicker than the Big Ten. In the Big Ten, I'm definitely a DN. In the okay, Big Ten. okay. You got more three four schemes. Ah, that is, okay. You got bigger uh, uh, DN six six guys. All that. When you go to the SEC, them DNs is six one two fifty six two two fifty running the edge. And so it was a totally different dynamic of the sport down there being in the SEC. And I was the perfect SEC offensive lineman if you think about it. So man, you're absolutely right. And your statistics just kind of they just <laughs> yeah. they just change and you know different. Type of so it's like I could be stubborn and go for DN, or I can, or I can get on the field. Yeah, yeah, because you hear stories about dudes going to college and getting their positions changed and they yeah, leave, yeah, yeah, or they yeah. quit. Like, what do you mean? You still on scholarship, right? Yeah. yeah so what's the problem? And, you and, still going to the club? You still hollering at girls, right? So what's the problem? Facts. Yeah. One story out that come to mind, and you know, I don't know if he listens to the show, but to put him out there, Robert Red, he coached flag football. So, so uh, uh, Coach Red, he played for Bowling Green, got all the Bowling Green receiver records, and this is from what I'm hearing. When he wanted to go pro, they wanted him to play running back because he was an undersized receiver. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to change his position to running back. Therefore, his ass was was never in the NFL. Yeah, they, they pretty much <laughs> was like, you know, is this – are you – either you going to play or you gone. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and he didn't want to change. And most times we think of receivers wanting to switch to quarterback, but they was like, no, nah, you going to play RB or is it? So you could be stubborn like yeah. that or you could be like, yo, I'm going to – And a, you know what's I yeah. never understood that. Yeah. The only position that you can be stubborn at – 
we really ain't have a position to be yeah. stubborn, honestly, man. You got to just roll with the punches because you got to realize your coach has been doing this for a long time. They done seen a lot, so they know what's better suited for you yeah. and your body. Like, we joke around with you talking about you was a running back. You probably was a good running back, but it's your high school, middle school yeah. coach saw you like, hey, you might be a fullback yeah, yep. or you could fullback. be a really good pulling guard <laughs> yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> and they, for sure. Yeah, and Facts, they, though. You know what I'm Facts, though. And, and hey, they know. I definitely transition you know what I'm saying? They know. Like, you feel me? So they know. And, and I, 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 bro, I, I go through that to this. Day, hey, bro. Pops was like, yo, put him yeah. at guard. And I'm yeah. like, fuck that. I'm trying to run the ball. Right. <laughs> and I go through that to this day. You know, I'm coaching now, and I'm going through it. I'm arguing with kids all the time. Like, dude, yeah, you might have been a good DN in high school, but you're the perfect office lineman right now, okay? <laughs> so, it's fun. That, I mean, that's how I go. Yeah. It, and it, what's funny is that nationwide – Transition from uh, 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 no 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 Pee Wee football. I thought he was like a hard hitting ass DN. <laughs> yeah, but, but offensive lineman. I thought he was a hard hitting ass DN yeah. to get to high school, and all of a sudden he a lockdown corner. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Like, uh-huh. But he was slow as shit though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. smart. He, he, technique, man. Technique. The technique. The yeah, Darrell yeah, Reeves style. Man. The game, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you still do no fly zone to this day though. No fly zone. You already know. There you go. So, anyways, so at South Carolina. Ever what? <laughs> what? It's no fun zone. <laughs> but no, it works though. Well, it works. Caught, ain't nobody caught a pass on me in, in any turkey bowl, any shit we did, flag yeah. football, whatever. You smart yeah. man. You gave up one big pass in your whole career. That's because you probably anticipated. I know, I know. Yeah. With throw, touchdown, so, game no, no, over. No, with throw. That was huge, and that's why I told you cover three. It's coming that was. Your way. So it's Loki no. Meat's fault. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. with throw. <laughs> throw yeah. one in the bus. No, no, no. Throw that was with throw. throw. No, no. With throw, nobody caught a ball on me. That was a touchdown in the back of the end zone and welcome. With throw, didn't nobody catch a ball on me. Nigga, it was welcome. What with game th- was that at welcome, Nate? Senior with year. Th- with throw is when I slip and then catch the pass. Nobody caught a ball on me against with throw. It was huge. Oh, yeah. You dropped a it touchdown. Was, every with throw. Whatever. <laughs> That's what it was. I didn't drop it. Anyways, Hughes was like, You didn't drop it because you used hey, I'm on. like, Hughes. Post coming, cover three meets. Post coming. Oh yeah, that's you. a fact. I, I meant that to this day, but I ain't have my cowboy collar or my motherfucking nothing. So I was out there naked, and my brain was on some other shit. So now yeah, you, I shouldn't even been in the oh, game. Now if you can't tell, they they still ain't got over this shit. Oh, no, you can see, it just got real. Still still got got his cowboy <laughs> collar. Did you, have your, did you have your sunblock under and all that, man? Bro, nah, bro. Look, you man, you know, playing in the league, playing football, down on your whole life. If you ain't got like, okay. First of all, our pass was way too big in high school. Mm-hmm, I don't know why the fuck they had us in them big-ass pads. So, first of all, my pass was huge, and I wore, like, the thick cowboy collar that was, like, down here, front and back. So, I don't know how I left it, bro, at the school. We in Cincinnati. I'm like, where my shit at? It's missing. Bro, my pass loose as fuck. <laughs> I'm like, I ain't got no protection. I'm out here naked, and they got me out here playing safety. I'm tackling niggas. My, like, I'm feeling this shit, like, not normal. Shoulder already weak. I already dislocated my shoulder early in the season. So, every time I tackle somebody, it's loose. And then, um, yeah, bro, my shit, I'm just out there bugging. Like, bro, I need one of you bum-ass niggas on the sideline to give me a cowboy collar so I can play for real. And they wasn't giving it up. So, I'm thinking about that. And next thing I know, Twan, like, nigga, cover three, wrote in this post. And I'm like, all right. Next thing I know, I'm like, I don't know what happened. And the nigga <laughs> scored. So, have you, Cartier, have you ever had a welcome to football moment? Welcome to high school football moment? Shit. Uh, I had a welcome to high school football moment really from know. from practice when it you know Scouto yeah, playing no Scouto yeah. and and you play Scouto because you want to earn your spot on the team. Yeah. You're like I want to earn some playing time. Well, this particular time I had to go up as a fullback because they they didn't want me to run the ball. Uh, they, uh, all of a sudden they don't want running backs running five flats no more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's new. Man. That's that new school. <laughs> new school. You know what I'm saying? So I go up the middle and I got to block Lou Davis. And when I tell you, he rung the fuck out of me, bro. Mm-hmm. And, and reason why I bring this up is because I, I think about my older brother, Jason, who was a freshman when you was a senior, yeah, Sean. Yeah. And uh, he talked about his introduction, playing Scout O on kickoff team. Yep. Now, bro is, was all of probably 135 at the time. Mm-hmm. And he came home. <laughs> and he, and when, I, when I tell you, our, our tub at the house – didn't work. You had to run the shower so it could fill up. Yeah. Right, right. When I tell you, he let that motherfucker run <laughs> to, to fill up with a shower. <laughs> he like, uh, he's like, yeah, but I'm O2 boys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know y'all name. Y'all was right. just O2 boys at that oh, point. Oh, they killed him. They killed him. <laughs> and, and I'm like, bro, they probably love just fucking up freshmen. That's bro. it, bro. That's <laughs> it, because that's how we used to get done, man. Coach Powell ain't play that. Because they really, you know, this was Coach my era then. He ain't really like freshmen to play varsity. They ain't want to, but, you know, I was blessed enough to be, you know, 
good enough to be able to play varsity, but yeah. he still didn't want yeah. it. But I think he saw what you saw in me and was like, he got to play. But they used to try to kill me, bro. But, I, you know, my brother was on the team, so I wasn't having it. So I knew, you know, I knew they weren't going. I knew they weren't going to beat me up physically because of my brother Nate. But I knew that they couldn't beat me up physically on the field. You feel me? So I really wasn't worried. And Nate didn't always been Nate. <laughs> oh yeah, he, he has always been Nate. Don't foul him. Yeah, don't foul him. Don't touch him. Don't push him. And see, high school might have been worse because he had muscles. Yeah, back he then. was limping weights then. He was strong back then, so it was worse then. See, when well, you on that two twenty five, I know you we, in school with his with Cardi's big brother. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I know we talked about this story before, but we got to bring this shit back. Up. Just for Nate Sean. So we hooping at the Y, bro. Oh shit! Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. We hooping at the Y, bro. And uh, we we a body short, so we like Nate call Nate Twan call Nate. He like, all right, cool. I'm gonna call him. He's like, hey Nate, what you doing? He's like, nothing. He's like, you trying to hoop? He's like, yeah, where? Well, uh, Kettering Y. He's like, all right, I'm gonna pull up in a second. Now wait, so Kettering up. YMCA though, like yeah. recreational basketball. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> so we he pull up, you know, we playing. It's a good game, you know. I think we down two or something like that. Man up. Uh, <laughs> They called a lot of fouls on Nate, and he ain't feeling that shit. So he like, hey, call another motherfucking foul, I'm going to beat your ass. Talking to the ref. The ref was like, I called the police on you. Nate looked him dead in his face and said, man, you could call the police. You're going to be dead before they get here, so it don't matter. I was like, bruh. Game over. My with, life changed with at that no, moment. Was like, with no LOL behind <laughs> nothing. it, no Game. nothing. Game no over, nothing. bro. Y'all won. Like, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, okay, time out. Like, and then, uh, and then Nate says, if the police coming, you might, I might as well kill you before they get here, so they have a reason to lock me up. <laughs> yeah, I was straight like, serious. So I'm like, damn. No, nah, I'd have gave him the ball, the whistle, <laughs> right. the lions on the on the hey, court. Whatever, the, you whatever score he wanted, that's yeah, what it bro, was. You, won, bro. Y'all got, you got the juice now. I'm like, y'all go ahead, bro. Let's <laughs> just play. He eventually I think left we put Navon in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, y'all go ahead and play, bro. He eventually left the gym, though, so it was peaceful. Anyway. <laughs> that's late, oh, bro. Shit, bro. So, so Nashawn, when you get to South Carolina, yeah. what was your welcome to college football moment? Oh, wait. My welcome to college football moment was that day I got switched. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking I'm a hot stud, defense end, defense alignment or whatever. And they telling me, you know, I might not be as fast as they thought I was. So we're going to switch it off as a line. So that was my walk on the football moment because I thought I was hot stuff or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I thought I was pretty damn good. And they switched me. So like I told y'all earlier, man, I wasn't tripping, man. I'm, I'm away from home. I got my own bedroom for the first time. <laughs> my own shower. You know, I'm lit. I got everything, my own everything. I grew up in a house full of four brothers so and both parents, thank God. So I never had my own shower, bedroom, none of that. So I was cool. I'm like, I switched the old line. You just cool. grabbed the remote and flicked shit. Hey, I'm cool. Cause... I'm here. I'm still on, I, asked, I asked my coach, like, I'm still on scholarship. He said, yeah. I'm like, shit, let's go. <laughs> right, I can just switch right. me to offense. Yeah, so yeah. I went to the offensive line. Man, my first day on the scout offensive line, I'm blocking the uh, first round DN, Kalimba Edwards. He went first round from South Carolina to the, uh, the Raiders. And I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. So I'm like, shoot, this might be the position for me. You know what I mean? My coach see me. Guess what? I was on scout O-line maybe two days. And now I'm on the second team. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I'm traveling. Now I'm getting some play time. So obviously it was the 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 best idea for me, you know, the yeah. best situation for me. And my coach knew what they were talking about. But that walk to college moment was me getting switched because I thought I was pretty good at the end. Now, my your welcome to college moment yeah. was when you put hands on that nigga Pollock. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> that's yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Every now, day, not every day, but yeah. at least once every two weeks. Nationwide used to rock that shirt yeah. at school. And I'm like, come on, let's take a picture. Yeah. You and your shirt. Yeah. So, and, I, and it's been on my TV, I'm too. Yeah, yeah, I posted yeah. it a couple back weeks ago. Yeah. Day. That shit was crazy. Yeah, man, bro. that was my sophomore year, man. Y'all got to understand, David Pollock was probably the most highly highest decorated defensive player in the SEC. Like, he ain't do all that great in the NFL because he got an injury. But I want to say he was four-time All-SEC, four, three-time All-American, three-time player of the year. Like, he got some crazy stats. So, you beat his whole helmet off. Man, listen, bro. <laughs> I just got so tired of him trying to get in the crowd going and talking trash, bro. And one time he came off and – y'all know football dirty. Mm -hmm. man. He hit me one of these. I chopped it down and I hit him back in the face. He swung back. I swung back. And we just – we got a little hand play right there and I popped his helmet off. And, you know, I'm worried that 
I'm gonna get a flag, I'm gonna get thrown off. The referee was like, keep it clean, keep it clean. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I love the NCAA. <laughs> Let's go. You know what I'm saying? I, I just knew I was thrown out the game, man. Cause yeah. we we you know, anytime you ball your fist up and throw a punch, you pretty much gonna get thrown out the game, man. The referee just like keep it clean, keep it clean. Bro, we went back at it and um so I that really was your license, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was cool. I had really I really had a good game that game. We ended up losing by two. We tried to go for a two point conversion. We we dropped the dang on pitch on a on the option. But anyway, I had a really good game and I think that's what helped me. Anytime you play well against a dog, yeah, that's when you get noticed. You know what I'm saying? You so. had somebody out there that kicked your ass though? Like they just like not in man. college, yeah. man. NFL I did. Though. Okay. NFL, that's where it got real. That's when you realize like, hey, this is a whole nother level of athleticism and greatness right here. Like, like, do they? Uh, was it like strength difference, or was it just like technique? Man, to be honest with with y'all, cause y'all my boys, I think it was everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just being real. Like, man, it, it's one thing we go to college and everybody all state, yeah, yeah everybody yeah. pretty good, everybody some dogs and they all right. But it's one thing we go to the league where every you got half these cats who are Hall of Famers. You got pro bowlers, all pro. You got guys who was all guys who was all American in high school and in college or whatnot. So my first day on the job, you know, I'm third team offensive tackle. I'm going against Michael Strahan. Oh shit, Michael Strahan. Yeah, yeah right. You shit, feel me? Shit, so yeah. Michael Strahan go on the bench for a second. I'm going against O.C. Mayer. O.C. Mayer get tired. I'm going against Justin Tuck. So, like, I'm not yeah, getting bro. a break. Like, Nothing, you know, bro. in college, you're going to go eventually go against a bum, a scrub, a walk-on, or something, right? Bro, I'm going against the best, the best, even better. Shit. And, and guess what? All of them finally went out. I'm going against their first-round draft pick, <laughs> Matthias Kiwanuka from Boston College. So, it's like you're not going against, you're not going against no scrub at no point. Ever, ever, <laughs> ever, you know what I'm ever, like everybody you gonna play against is a stud in his own right somehow, some way. So you're like I'm, it, it, there's no I'm about to catch my breath against dude. <laughs> nah, nah, it ain't, you ain't gonna find that little scrub to make look bad. You just gotta drop him and get going, man. Drop your nuts and get going, bro. I remember you telling me a story about how when you was on the Giants, you were uh, behind the longest starting offensive line, yes, going, man. and then the, you went to the Saints did the same shit or something. Yeah, like that. man. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy because. Uh, I thank God for my, my – I played in the NFL five and a half years, and that half matters when it comes to vested, yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know. Um, Pinches and all that. Yeah, yeah, all that good stuff, retirement and all that. So I say five and a half proudly. But, man, five of those years I was behind the best offensive lines in NFL history, and it's a fact. When I was at the New York Giants, man, that offensive line started 73 consecutive games in a row together. Damn. Now that's like four years. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You play, you got 16 game seasons. Uh, if you're lucky enough, you play the playoffs. So we went to the playoffs pretty much every year, or whatever. So they they got the record for the most consecutive starts of all time, all five yeah. at once. That's unbelievable. You yeah. talking about durability and strength and and being able to get the contract negotiations together, whatever, whatever. So I rarely got to play there, and I know I was pretty good. So you know I was so good that they kept me, they tendered me. And if you tender somebody who don't play, you know his value just yeah. being on the bench yeah. and being on scout team or whatever, whatever. So I finally got traded to uh, – I got well, – matter of fact, I went to the Seattle Seahawks first. And now I'm behind the best office lineman ever in yeah. Walter Jones, <laughs> yeah. left yeah, tackle. So this dude is not coming off the field at all. <laughs> like, right. they want him on defense, special teams, and everything because he's just that good. He's a Hall of Famer, first ballot already. Um, so I'm not getting a playing time like I deserve. As soon as I leave there, I get I got cut, then I got picked up by the Saints. I, their whole freaking starting five made the Pro Bowl that year. So I'm not getting to play there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas I might I had a homeboy or two, I ain't gonna say their names, but they went to some sorry teams and they got their opportunity because you on the team of the Cleveland Browns, Detroit Lions, or the Buffalo Bills who only won one game in five <laughs> right. years. Right. So you getting your opportunity because right. I'm like, give a damn over there. Yeah, right. You know, right. we ain't winning no games. So he's getting to play. He's getting what we call um line um Excuse me, you get your money, your bonuses. Yeah. The more you play, you get your bonuses at the yeah. end of the uh, year. So they're getting to play. They're getting the contracts. They're getting, the, getting vested. They're getting all that stuff that I'm not getting because I'm on these good-ass teams, yeah. man. You know, I, I I used to mess with Natuan all the time. Like, no, you went to Dunbar at the wrong time. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you was on a team. You you was at school with two first-round NBA players. Yeah, right, and, right. Uh, 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 Mark, uh, Mark Anderson, Mark probably Anderson. the best. Of all of them, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You got Aaron, you got all these good-ass dudes that went to Dunbar. I'm like, bro, you pretty good. You just hit Dunbar at the wrong time. It's all time. Yeah, yeah, It's all about yeah, time. Yeah. If he was at Dunbar when I was there, he'd have played. Or if he was at Dunbar, you know what I'm saying, when when, 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 when Navon was there, he probably would have played. Yeah. But shoot, you behind the best Dunbar team ever. That's you know the part that cracks me up because I remember you saying, like, uh, I look at these two Super Bowl rings and I'd be like, well, shit, I'd rather go to the uh, Buffalo Bills and be 0-16 
and get some playing time. Yeah, bro. But but that's the type of shit you don't think about. You right. just think about like, yo, I'm a champion, so I can brag about that. Right. But you like, yo, if I'd have been 016 with the Bills getting playing time, I could have set my whole family up for, for life. <laughs> and I tell people that all the time, like, man, I thank God, I thank God, thank God for my Super Bowl rings. But I would trade one of them in a heartbeat, <laughs> just one though, for, for a couple of M's. You feel me? <laughs> right, like, right. Because like I said, I got a homeboy. He played for the Detroit Lions on all they sorry teams, and he lucked up and got one of them five year, thirty five million dollar contracts. And but I got the two. He ain't got no rings. Now. <laughs> right. I got two of them, but I ain't get that five year, thirty five million dollar contract. I'm like, dude, I would get both these up. He, yo, he said. Same thing. I give up my contract, get, get one of your rings. I said, bro, you can have both these rings. <laughs> <laughs> swap it out. Yeah, we swap this out right now. So, <laughs> you know, it's a gift and a curse, man. Bro, that's the, that's the shit that, like, it's funny because as, as fans, when we sit back, we just try to uh, put players in the fucking NBA 2K uh, lottery and be like, yo, we could put this person here, put that person there. And it's like, yo, all that shit makes a difference. It maybe does. maybe it does, this man. player is going to this team because they want to be on the field. That's right. Yeah. That's right, man. You see that all the time. And, like, I, you know, I argue with people now. It's about it's 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 a it's about championships. Don't get me wrong, but you want that money. Yeah. Like I think about the Golden State dynasty right now. I think all of them done after this year because they ain't yeah. got their big paydays yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think about Draymond, he's a dog, dog. He ain't got that big payday yet. And you got three rings, you know what I'm saying? You got Clay. Clay. He he a dog. He ain't got that big check yet either. I think all these boys leaving to go get that check out of this year, man. They like listen. Especially, I thought at the time I thought they were going about to get their fourth. Obviously, it looks pretty dull for them with Raptors playing the way they are. But um, you got three rings. It's time to go get that check. Yeah, now. yeah. It's time Let's to go. get paid at that point. Yeah, at that point, that's what Reeves did. Reeves got that ring, man. Shoot, he wouldn't got that check. Gone, bro. Yeah. <laughs> He said, "Fuck Reeva's Island." Yeah, yeah. I'm about to, I'm I'm about about to go resort. I'm about to go buy one. Yeah, I'm about to buy an island resort. Yeah. So, so but uh, all right. So one of the reasons why you here this weekend um, is is your camp. Oh yeah. yeah how long has this camp been going on? Man, this was my fifth year. Uh, we wrapped up my fifth. Um, annual football camp yesterday and it was a blast being that was my fifth year i tried to go bigger and better and uh, yeah. thank you to facebook donations and people donating my sponsors gym city car wash the arena and uh rogers barbershop man we was able to give out some major gifts this year um i think our biggest award was a television i gave out i think a 27 inch you know uh vizio television to a, a lucky young camper i gave away two wees um thank you to coach o at dunbar high school uh, we gave up two wees we video games. Um, we also gave away um, $100 gift cards, Nike gift cards. Um, I wanted to give away a pair of Jordans, but, you know, I don't know the kids' yeah, shoe yeah, size yeah. or whatever. So I gave them a $100 gift card. I gave two of those away, two $50 gift cards, PlayStation gift cards. Man, we gave I gave out so many things because that's what I wanted to be, and I wanted them to have to earn it. Yeah, right yeah, now yeah. we live in that generation now where participation is enough, mm -hmm. but it's not enough. Yeah, man, yeah, because yeah. Just because you participate don't mean you're going to get that scholarship to Ohio State or whatever. So yep. you got to earn these things, man. And um, we gave out rings. Uh, that's one. That's a big hit at my uh, camp, rings. So oh, yeah. The 707 winner, the coach, the, the players, they get a ring. It's a nice little ring, a little trinket. Um, we gave out trophies, obviously, to the MVP, uh, the office MVP, the overall MVP, all that stuff. So I try to give out as much stuff as possible. And I swear to y'all, the Facebook, Facebook people who give me donations, I use all that money. Every dime, and I go spend it on them. I leave if I leave with something, it's probably twenty dollars gas money to get me back home. But that ain't gonna go far. <laughs> that ain't gonna go far at all. Yeah. But uh, I, I spend all that money on the kids. I feed them, man. Whatever. Um, it's a really good deal. The one thing I like is, man, I get so many people coming back and working it. Yeah. I try to get first of all, all my brothers. I love them. Thank y'all. They didn't work every uh every camp that I had so far. All five of them. But I try to do a good job getting all the college athletes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I felt like that was the one thing I was lacking. Them dudes weren't tangible. Right, right, like, right. It was right, a right. big drought. People don't realize it was a big drought in the city yeah. from peerless to me yeah like i can't think of nobody who made it to college from peerless to me yeah because when, when i was at dayton public my ceiling that i thought my mind was urbana right they, they, yeah that's exactly. all you would see yeah because yeah. they was the only ones who was coming recruiting <laughs> right right, right exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah yeah urbana stayed coming through shout yeah. out to urbana yeah. but it was just such a big drought and them dudes wasn't tangible to me mm. right so i try to bring all the guys back who made it to college so they can be tangible to these kids man like it's crazy because i mean from bobby long to al vance robinson um, like I said, big uh, John Lumpkin, Aaron Lumpkin, Will Lumpkin, Brandon McKinney, uh, myself. I seen Ringer at there. Yeah, Javon yeah, yeah, Ringer yeah, yeah. didn't work the last four. He had something to do this year. Uh, Roy Roundtree. Uh, it's so many. Jay Pruitt, man. People forget Jay went to um, mm -hmm. Indiana. Uh, Daquan and Norris came two years, man. Like just having those dudes around, they don't even understand yet. 
the power that they're giving these kids. Yeah. Just seeing them. The presence. The presence, yeah, man. Because, yeah. I mean, when I worked those, um, when I was a kid going to those Mark Baker camps, y'all got to understand, Mark Baker, I know I know he got a bad rap now, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. he was that dude yeah, back yeah. then. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, about that. Right. He yeah. was that dude. We all went to that Mark Baker camp, all five of my brothers. You know, we was there yeah. lit at all our 10 courts, man. Because my granddad. Go ahead, go ahead. Go now, ahead. my granddad was the park manager there, so everything had to go through him anyway. So we was there playing hooping. It was amazing to see how many kids was at that deal. And, you know, the Keith Byers uh, deal and the Marco Cole McCann. Big Daddy. All that, man. And all, that. Yeah. all them dudes, yeah. man. All that was huge for me, man. And, um, and another underrated one was the All-Star, the future All-Star camps that used to be at Fairview. Yeah. Yeah. John, yeah. Uh, Jeff Hoskins, Hoskins. And all, the Hoskins yeah. family. <laughs> yeah, the Hoskins yeah. families used to do those, man. That was a whole week yeah. of fun. Free food, fun, yeah. and you got an opportunity to win yep. something. So all those camps helped mold my camp, you know what I'm saying? All those camps helped mold my camp and gave me the idea for my camp. And I just knew the impact that they had on me. I want to get that to somebody else. And that, and that time they spent at your camp, they not on the street doing something else. Exactly. This had to, to be a different on. feeling, though, because this year, I mean, it ain't like you plan your date around this the tragedy right. that hit Trotwood, but, right. you know, to, to come back to the city after a tornado. Yeah. You know, how, how was that feeling, though? Man, you know what? It, it was a great feeling, and it was a mixed emotion about it because I didn't know if it was the right time to do it yeah, and yeah, what yeah. they just went through so fast, probably about a week ago almost, and I just didn't know. But somebody told me, like, dude, I think you should have it. These kids need an outlet <laughs> because not only are the parents affected, but the kids are affected. Yeah. And anything you can do to get their minds off of I just lost my house would be a great opportunity for them. And then y'all got to remember, man, sports has always been the outlet for crisis situations. Yep. Man, I remember, it's not a coincidence, but we were the – South Carolina played Mississippi State. We were the first game after 9-11. Mm -hmm. It was a Thursday night game, and we were the first game after 9-11 out of any sport. So yep. all games were suspended, baseball, football, basketball, everything. We were the first game, and just seeing people in that crowd packed, crying, you know, you always pull the flag out, all that, the soldiers crying, everybody crying. It was just that feel-good moment. And I know how a, a sport event can can overcome a crisis and everybody can kind of lay their hairs down or whatever. But and then on the side note, man, you know, a lot of the crime happened after, after a crisis. Right, right, everybody right. bored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah, you yeah, go yeah. Hey, shit going on. stores and stuff going on. You see your mama crying, you're going to go do something about it. You're going to try to yeah. go get her 5 or $10 to feed the family. You're going to try to do whatever you got to do to make your mama feel better. And so I'm trying not to get them bored. Just want to get them excited. And that's another reason why I try to give out so many prizes and awards because, hey, man, you might go back home with a $100 night gift card. You just lost everything. <laughs> right. That $100 right, right, feel right. like a million yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, Fuck the George. Yeah, I'm about to use yeah, this 100 yeah, on something yeah, else. I might, <laughs> I might go chop this $100. I'm going to get my whole family a pair of $25 yeah. flip-flops <laughs> yeah, or Nikes yeah, yeah. or something. So we all have something. Yeah. But – you know, I wish I could have gave more, but I'm I'm happy what was what with what was given, man. And uh, I'm very appreciative of all my guys who worked the camp and all the uh, the families who came out. Like I said, we had a lot of Trotwood, we Rams, the, the yeah. Wee team. So I know they got the message. I know they yeah, were yeah, thankful, yeah, yeah. man. It was a lot of Trotwood kids there, and, and people forget, man. Um, you know, on this side, North, the North, North Day, Ridge side, North, Day, yeah. the, yeah. North Day side got hit hard yeah, too, man. Yeah. So Beaver Creek, yeah, too, yeah, yeah. Beaver Creek as well. Yeah. So man, a lot of people came out, and I was very appreciative, yeah. It's it's interesting that you say like sport events bring people together. Yeah. Because sports can save lives too. Because yeah. I just remember me growing up, you know, growing up in a, in a rough environment. Yeah. But I was always a little dude that that played sports. So the gangsters in the neighborhood wouldn't let nobody fuck with me. Because you play you, ball. You, he off limits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He ain't in no shit. I don't Man. want y'all trying to introduce him to drugs. If if any fights was a jump off. Yeah. They had my back whether my brothers was around or not. Man, I'm a huge <laughs> product of that, man, because we, we moved to a little rough apartment area yeah. in Cornell Heights. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, after they found out who I was and who, who my brothers was and who everybody was, they left them alone, man. Yeah. So, you know, y'all know going to Dunbar, that's all we had. <laughs> right, right, right. It was right. the Soda Bass cats, all exactly. the score cats, yeah. dope boys, what a gangsters, killers. We we got them all at Dunbar. <laughs> right. So it, to make it through Dunbar, you had to be a guy guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had to be a dude. So sports helped me tremendously, man, pull, just kind of <laughs> stay out of Trouble, man, from that aspect. Pull up the first day of school in that bus, like, oh shit, gangs is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real. Oh man, I ain't gonna it lie to you. Real, real, bro. When you see fifteen year olds pulling up in the box Chevy on rims, you're like, dude, well, you straight out of middle school. What are you doing? Man, my brother's nah. well. I'm right, in there. right. I'm like, bro, I knew I was living a different life then. That for shit real. was real when I got off the bus at Fairview. Yeah, 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 that's right. Hey, facts. You went to the view. Facts. Like, facts. I walked up through stairs and I seen a metal detector. Like, hold up. Oh. Yeah, you like yeah, these eighth bro. graders at least thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, it was real. Bro. Bro, you know, don't bar. We Shout had one of the, the first first dudes shoot they self in the um, cafeteria. Yeah, damn. Showing off Wait, a gun, pop shot himself in the thigh. So, I God. I yeah, know. this all this before combine, Sandy Hook, and all that stuff happened, man. So it was real at the bar, man. 
We had a daycare. Yeah. We, so y'all, daycare. Oh, we had a daycare. daycare. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what time it is when you got a daycare at your school for your, for your, your student. You know what I'm saying? They, tw- they mom went to it. <laughs> <laughs> they mom went to the daycare. Little bro. <laughs> little bro went to the Del Mar daycare. But yeah, she would have our girls had babies, so you already knew what time it was, man. Love That's them to funny. death. Wasn't no MTV special on that nah, show. Nah, nah, nah. nah. We ain't had that 16 to pray to Dr. Drew. Where you at, man? We'd have plenty of them right there to make that money. So, but nationwide, though, you you are you know you volunteered the camp every year. Oh yeah, five yeah, years yeah. at this point. Yeah. Tell me about your experience as being a volunteer on there. I mean, it, it's a great experience, and I, I think this year I'm I'm looking at him trying to hold his <laughs> composure I, I like and his it. liquor though. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm great. I'm great. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But no, like this year, like you can really see like the like the kids really have an impact, like because we all coming off the experience of the tornado. And like over here, obviously we we don't see any damages or anything, but we know the different parts of Dayton where they did have damages and destruction of the houses and lost houses and shit like that. But out at that camp, them kids didn't notice anything. Man, they was just there to compete, have fun, have a good time. There's a lot of laughs, a lot of jokes and shit, and it was just a good time, man. It, it, it was great to be out there for real. And that's what it was about, man. Kind of getting their mind off of it, man. We know. They, they, they done lost a lot, and they're going to have to go back to that after this yeah. camp. But, man, it's just like a movie, man. You go to a movie theater, and you in that movie for that three hours, man. Like, yeah. I was in the Avengers when Thanos took that thing over. Like, <laughs> I can't believe he just took that thing over. So, you know, them three hours, man, well, it was three, four hours, whatever it may be, man, just get them get their minds off of it. And remember, man, if I do really well at this football thing, I might can get my mama yeah. a yeah. house. Yeah. Or I might not, I can might save her some money because I can go get me a scholarship or whatever it may do, be. Do you ever feel any uh, – I don't know what's the right word to use, but do you ever feel like, all right, if I'm showing them ball, mm-hmm. should I show them a different outlet to, to be successful? Like, because, you know, in black communities, you got to have a, a, mm-hmm. a jump shot, yeah, yeah. play ball, or get out of there. You well, know what I'm saying? You know what? You're absolutely yeah, right, yeah. but I don't feel that way yeah, because yeah. football teaches so many more life lessons. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, teaches yeah. you about, man, being pers- uh, persistent, persevering, man, relentlessness, man. It teaches you selflessness. It teaches you all those good qualities in a man or a human being, period, man. So I learned so much from, from, from football, and it, it started with my household, number one, but I learned so much through football, man. That's cra- hand hand adversity, man. You can't mm-hmm. pay for classes like that no more. You got to go through these experiences, and football teach you all that. My favorite movie is Remember the Titans by yeah. far, man, mm-hmm. because of what they had to go through just to become one team and come together. But kids learn so much through football, man, because in, in any sport, you're going to be down at some point. What you going to do, man? Yeah, you going to yeah. put it up? Yeah. You going to go to the bench and cry? Or you gonna go turn up and try to run a 94 yard touchdown for the game winner against Metaldale in 2001? So, I mean, Metaldale cancer, you know what I'm saying? Kill yourself, you know. But but it was one of those deals, yeah. man. We're like, mm-hmm. it's teaching you all those different things, man. That's big facts because I've had sports in two different lives. I've had it to where. Ain't nobody give me shit. So then yeah. I had to earn it. That you got to grind. You, which you teach you in life. You got to grind. And guess what? And These then I, kids ain't learning that. <laughs> and and oh, I've had yeah. sports to where I got so good at, at about seventh grade to where they was giving me shit. There you go. And I couldn't handle that either. There you go. I couldn't handle the the, the ego of like, oh, this. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I ain't got to work as hard Man. as y'all. And then I fell off. Then you got to you got you got to handle the fall off and, and go back to grinding. And I, I don't know if it's not being taught at home handling adversity, but that's the thing I feel about with this big transfer thing and transfer portal. Yeah. I feel like he is like, man, I ain't no starter. I'm leaving. I'm <laughs> right, going to be right, a starter. Right. I yeah. mean, there's no fight in these cats yeah, right now. Yeah. Only position you allowed to transfer from is quarterback. Yeah. You know why? Because only one ball on the field, yeah, yeah. one person can throw at one time. So if you're a freshman coming in and another freshman coming in with you is better than you, yeah, you might need to leave. But every other position is multiple positions out there, bro, you need to just grind, fight, and earn you a spot. You might not play your freshman. You might have to wait till your red shirt, sophomore year, whatever. You go yep. to the right school like Ohio State and Bama, hell, you don't need to play one year anyway. Yeah, so you don't yeah. need to play four years at Alabama and Ohio State. You know what I'm saying? But I hate that, man. It's Cass that, is transferring like nothing now, man. It's that mentality we used to have like, yo, my man ain't finna do shit. Right. If, yeah, if yeah, we yeah, lose, fact. it ain't gonna be because of yeah, me. I'm gonna lock him up. Do your job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, they gotta learn how to handle this thing, man. So uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up with two yeah. two different topics. One, uh, with you being a coach now okay. uh, um, and coaching college football, how are you trying to help mold their mentalities of like, yo, ain't nobody about to hand you know when you step on this field. Yeah. You got you to gotta grind for it. Well, you know, in college it's a different dynamic. You have different goals. And my three goals is, number one, to graduate. They got to graduate, man, because that paper is going to take you further than football everywhere. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Number two, leave a better man. 
I want all them dudes to leave a better man than they can. Because you coming into college, you 17, 18, you're leaving at 22, 23. I need you to leave a better person, a better human being. Because the only way we're going to change this world is by one random act of kindness yeah, yeah. by yeah, each other. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man. Absolutely. And number three, I want to win some ball games. Yeah, so yeah. that's our three goals. I tell I tell every kid that I recruit or every office lineman to come in, those are our three goals, number one. Um, it's just far as changing them, man, I'm changing them by their attitude. You know what I'm saying? Deion Sanders said it best. Don't let my confidence offend your insecurity. Yeah. I'm trying to tell my boys, be confident out there. Right, yeah. Be a dog out there. Only way you're going to be confident, though, is by putting that work in. That 225 don't lie. Yeah. No matter yeah. what kind of a facility you might have, 225 is 225 anywhere you go. Yeah. You go to yeah. Ohio State, you go to Alabama, you go to anywhere, it's 225. You go to South Carolina State, and our raggedy facility, it's 225. Yeah. All that means something everywhere. All right, so – I'm trying to instill that confidence in them, that that hard work, that work ethic. And as an office lineman, we need chemistry. You, know, you ever we seen um, Last play. Chance You? Yeah, yeah. I've been <laughs> watching that, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, like, you see how, how much they handhold them? Yeah. And they yeah. still don't get it done? Yeah. Is it, is it like that? No, no, no. Okay. JUCO's a different animal. Okay. It's okay. a reason why they're there. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no disrespect to nobody who went to JUCO, but it's a reason why they're there. Yeah, yeah. There are some of the kids who need breastfed yeah, and need their right. hands held. It's a reason, okay? Like, being honest. Uh, in South Carolina, we don't, man. I, I try to give them their freedom, get them on their own. They freshmen. The freshmen that come in, I try to let them know what it's going to be like. I give them the forecast of college. Like, bro, it's going to be girls. It's gonna, you're going to have your own room. Your mama's not around. You're going to have assignments uh -huh. you, need to be ha you need to have done. In, in 24 hours, you got to get it done. So you need to prioritize your day. Yeah. Prioritize your day, and time management is the biggest thing for yeah, a college yeah. football athlete. You know what I'm saying? Because their day is so – And don't schedule no 8 a.m. And don't schedule no 8 a.m. <laughs> exactly. Uh. So their schedule is so loaded, they got to have good time management, man. But, uh, no, nah, we don't hold their hands like that, man. We, 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 we give them the real, and then if they don't do right, we put them on the stadium steps, man. We make them run Ooh. them steps. It, it, yeah. It. Hey, I seen I seen the <laughs> steps too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it seemed like every time you cut, cut on the TV, you got some analysts that's talking about athletes getting paid. Yeah, it's got to trickle to the locker room at that point. Absolutely, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, I'm a big, big. Big fan of athletes getting paid. Yeah. I think they should. I think it should be some sort of stipend. And I guess the easiest way to do it is just add into their scholarship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like Pell Grants are adding to scholarships of kids who's uh, uh, able to get Pell Grants. You should just add an extra whatever thousand to their scholarship. What is what is a thousand for a kid who's already getting a twenty three thousand a year scholarship? Just add it, make it twenty four, yeah. and put that other thousand in their pocket. And that could be for all athletes because yeah. you know women gonna jump in, Title Nine gonna jump in, all that's gonna jump. All at, yeah. all scholarship yeah. athletes. Yeah. If you don't scholarship, throw a thousand on top of it of their scholarship money. You feel? Yeah. Me? That's that, that's my thing. So like, I don't know if it's enough money to go around for all athletes, females, men, golf team, rowing team, mm -hmm. for all of them to get money, but. I feel like everyone should be able to make money off their likeness. So, like, if you Johnny Manziel, the year he won the Heisman, if he get a million off the field, let him get that million. Yeah, but people – first of all, people going to complain about anything. Let's yeah. get that straight yeah, yeah. down. And people going to complain about that. I'm Man, I'm not as popular as him. I'm not as popular as him. Now all the backstabbing going to come in. Right. I might tie your heart in somebody, you feel me, yeah. tear Ooh. his knee up, and now yeah. he's not the star no more and nobody care about your likeness. Damn. I think the easiest way is – well, I was, I'd have had this argument at barbershop and college everywhere – if you add it to the scholarship, man, that's that's the easiest way to do it, mm -hmm. and that's the less financial, the least financial blow you're going to take because you don't have to pull money from somewhere else. That's government aid, government money, school money, all that good stuff. Now, some colleges not going to be be able to afford it, yeah. But all these schools in the MAC, Big Ten, all that they can afford it. Ohio State they can afford it, man. All these schools can afford it. If you can afford to build a fifty million dollar facility, a mm -hmm. hundred million dollar facility, you, you can, can afford, afford it. it. If you can saving. afford to, uh, thirty million dollar <laughs> yeah. renovations yeah. at a state that already sent one hundred and ten thousand, and you try to get 120,000 seats yeah. because Tennessee got 118,000 seats. <laughs> you can afford to give your players an extra thousand. Um, you got other ways like uh, uh, per diem they usually give you, loaded up per diem and all that, uh, special assistance checks. It's so many checks they get. They get this check called a cost of attendance check now, which is insane for mm. a FBS school. So um, the, the, the hurtful part is if you don't get Pell Grant. Yeah. If you're a kid who don't get Pell Grant, you broke. Yeah. You one of the kids who broke. Yeah. And if you don't know this Pell Grant, man, you, your family got to make under like 32000 a year for you to get Pell Grant. That's a single parent home. Family. Though. That's a single parent yeah, home, no, right. Got, and then you. if you're in a double parent home, I think it's like 52000 which is pennies, man. Yeah, because, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's hard to get Pell Grant. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So if you're a lucky kid who get Pell Grant, you straight. You balling. You know, I, you know, I was one of them dudes who was lucky enough to get Pell Grant. So I was balling in college. But – now, man, you got to get them kids some sort of stipend, some, some, some sort of per diem, 
some sort of laundry money, however form or fashion you want to put it in, you got to get these boys some money. Do you feel like it's close to actually happening, or is it just? Oh, it's, it's happening. Well, the cost of attendance check is was 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 helping everything right okay. now. If you notice, you haven't noticed much crime in college sports no more. College nah, football. Nope. Guess what? Because they getting that cost of attendance check. That varies from different state to state that you in, obviously. But you, it's t- it's like five hundred a month or something like that. The players are getting the it. players are getting okay, it. Okay, so this right. is a form of a way to pay them without paying them. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And you won't know that unless you know somebody who's in college yeah. one. You know, I mean, D one. Uh, excuse me, college. A lot of the violence stopped when Urban Meyer left. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But that that's the best way to find it out, figure it out. You, you seen know? a program? Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. Seen a program? program? Yeah. How real is the program? How real is it? Yeah, the real is, uh, the program is real as it get, man. <laughs> you had a dinner, they put an envelope listen, in your pocket. It's as real as it get, man. Hey, hey you want to know something weird? Man, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Guess where that movie was shot at? South Carolina. University of South Carolina. <laughs> University of South Carolina. That's our stadium right there in the background, man. Our field, Don't our everything. Quote of the week. Right yeah, there. there you go. There you go. Hey, man, that's a trivia question for the next show. But, uh, man, it's real, man. I'm just going to be honest with you, man. From the, the whole nine, the whole nine, from he the tutors everything. and all that, everything is real. Um, I probably shouldn't even be saying this, but it is, man. I'm just being real with y'all. It's real like that. And um, the one thing you want to do, man, you just always want to put yourself in a position to win. That just be like that, man. You work hard. You deserve to play hard. You deserve whatever God gives you, man. That's right, a blessing. Right, yeah. Let's be real, man. We just talked about how the drug dealers took care of us in our neighborhood yeah, yeah, because yeah. you was a good athlete. You did the right things. Now, I'm pretty sure one of the drug dealers yeah, right. dropped a 20 in your right, pocket, right, right, and that right. 20 probably took you the rest of the week of school. Exactly, you feel me? So, exactly. I look at those type of deals as blessings, yeah, man. Yep. God put everybody on this earth for you, for somebody. What do you say on the program? Well, let me hold on to that 50 till you yeah, comfortable. Yeah, till yeah, you comfortable. Exactly, <laughs> man. Exactly, man. It's, it's, it's all legit, man. All the movies, man. I like. I love that movie. Too. I always I tell y'all, movie. Hollywood writers ain't that creative. No, they, no, they, they, they didn't seen it. They didn't been around. They, <laughs> right, done it. Right. they They got somebody who, bug, you know, putting that bug in yeah, their ear or something, man. That, that'll be tough to turn down, though. You know what I'm saying? You're not, turn you it struck, down. Yeah, you're not no, turning not it down. You're not turning it down, man. So that, that, that brings the question, like, how does it get to the point to where it's all of a sudden on ESPN and it's a blow up of Athletes taking money. It, it's Did too, somebody get disappointed? No, nah, it's too much money being given. Ah, okay. And you yeah. might have somebody who hating on you and yeah. drop that dime on you because guess what? You got TMZ now. You got all these websites and media takeout. Somebody can say, hey, man, I saw Natuan get $200,000. I got a picture. I can send you of him putting it in his Lamborghini. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, got yeah. A situation. you feel me? So you got the O.J. Mayo and Reggie Bush situation. They happened around the same time, I think. And, um, you know, Reggie was getting, I guess, they, they allegedly he was getting like a $15,000 penthouse a month or something mm-hmm. for the years he was there. O.J. Mayo was doing the same thing. It was the same booster that was hooking both of them up or whatever. And, um, you know, that's when I think it gets outrageous. Like, y'all can't – Chris Webber got a trophy for getting 600000 at Michigan yeah. back in 1989. Yeah. $600,000 $600, back then was like $6 million yeah. in college. What is but he the, doing? But the smart thing that Chris Webber did, everybody from the Five, five, five yeah, said, boy. I couldn't tell he had that kind of money because we were starving. Hey, for fact. We had yeah. to scramble up money to get Taco Bell or whatever, whatever. So Chris did a good job of hiding that money because yeah. he lived like a peasant. He lived like a dude who didn't have money. So I don't know what he did with the money. That's what all of them said. Jalen Rose, all of them said that. Like, I don't know what he did with the money if he got that money. Yeah. So I don't know why we getting in trouble because y'all have no proof that he got yeah. this money or whatever. He won't Reggie Bush, you know, with them, they uh, was uh, living in <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. He went around Averex jackets and all that. So. You know, Reggie Bush was living in penthouses. Uh, my man O.J. May was driving a Lamborghini all that stuff. Those are red flags, man. You think they don't see you? You can at least have your girl on the other side of something and say it's hers or something, you know. Damn it. You know, so. <laughs> or selling uh, what, what Terrell Pryor sell? His man, pants and shit. His yeah. pants, you know what I'm saying? His jerseys. And, and see, that, I got a problem. I feel like they should be able to sell that stuff. Bro. Yeah. That's, right. that, I got because Georgia they, boys got in trouble. Yeah, so they bowl rings yeah, or something. Yeah. Stupid, bro. They won I those like, things. Yeah, that's They're there. there. They earned it. It's there. You know what I'm saying? Anybody selling something on eBay or whatnot, it's theirs. It's their it's there is there a stuff to sell? Right. Yeah, that, that's some beat. Like after the season yeah. you get your jerseys. Like they're yours. They're you yours. wore those. You if you saying? broke, guess what? I'm gonna sell mine for three, four hundred dollars on eBay. Yep. Easy. Yo. Easy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Easily. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't and I wanna buy them. Right. Damn it. So stop tripping. Man, listen, I had a pair of Yeezys, the the first Yeezys that came out, the black ones, I think they called the pirate Yeezy or something. I bought them for the retail, what, one eighty, one ninety, whatever. Man, I saw cash sell them on eBay for two thousand. I put mine on eBay so fast, and I, I'm not even broke. But I'm not about to keep a hundred eighty dollar pair of shoes. Well, tell, him that. Yeah, tell him tell, that. Tell him that. Tell nationwide. Gotta, we got a pair. Of we tried to convince nah, him to hit the trigger on nine hundred dollars. He was trying to buy them. Uh, Travis, Travis Scott. Scott. Boy, they gotta go. 
They got to go. They got to go. Because <laughs> yeah. all you going to do is wear them and get mad at anybody who get close to them and step on them. <laughs> right, yeah, right, let, them right. let them go, man. Listen, yeah. I sold them things. Two bands, boy. You can have them. So, you know, size 15, rare anyway. <laughs> so, exactly. I mean, I'm just saying, with a dude's outfit or a bowl game. So, Georgia went to, like, the Sugar Bowl that year. That jersey went for whatever, whatever. That kid deserved that. That's his. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If he don't want to keep his memorabilia, you can't make him. Right. O- OJ, OJ wanted his. Right. <laughs> exactly. He had to go get his stuff back. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. But, yeah, man. So, so before I let you go, yeah. what you think? Um, think KD leaving? You think Kawhi leaving? First of all, KD is gone. Okay. Like, I don't think it's a fa- fact that he leaving. It's where he's going. He you not know, playing this, a game back. And I think he's proven to them that they need him. But, yeah. I mean, he's like, man, bro, I'm gone. Uh, I think it'll be the Knicks, man, the Mecca. I think they're going to try to bring it back. He's the only guy who can bring – the Knicks back to prosperity. You know what I'm saying? He's the only guy who can do that. Um, Kawhi, That's if a pipe he dream, they hope for two. Right, right. <laughs> right. If Kawhi win this thing, he's going nowhere. They're going to throw a blank really? check at it. Kawhi bringing right. them first time not only to the uh, to the finals, but he's going to bring them their first ring. Drake ain't letting him go. Kawhi don't seem like he Drake got an emotional Drake. attachment. <laughs> Drake ain't. Kawhi Drake don't seem ain't like he got an emotional attachment to shit though. See, but Bruh. they will. But listen, Bruh, listen. Toronto to get him everything. Bro, blank check. You already free. see the billionaires talking about free, free penthouse, penthouse free, free cars, free meals, free, free meals everything. for life. He won't even fist bump his teammates. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> he was in the zone. He was in the zone. You're right. You're right. He was in the zone. But I'm telling you, bro. I, I, I think it's a. It's, they're gonna give him a blank check. Whatever his max that they can give him, whatever the NBA allows, he's gonna get it. And whatever he they can't give him, he's gonna get on the back end with endorsements and everything else. Because Canada is pretty much another country, y'all. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's different true. endorsements up there. Like we down here with Verizon, T-Mobile. They got Telus. They got all TSN. They got a whole Nova another, Scotia. Nova Bank. Scotia. Right, they got. Right. Like, they got a whole nother world up there, literally. And they about to, man, they got a spot called Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> It'll make y'all throw IHOP away. That's how good Humpty Dumpty is. It's a breakfast <laughs> place. Breakfast pancake joint. So if he get a Humpty Dumpty contract, I might come up there Pitch with Kawhi him. selling pancakes. <laughs> Bro, he ain't got to. The claws, you can see him on a commercial now with 30 pancakes. Don't give him that. Oh, my bad. Don't give him that idea. My bad. Hey, delete that. Delete that, Twan. Delete that. Delete that nationwide. But yeah, man, I just feel like between his endorsements that he going to get and people taking care of him up there, it's no reason why not. And he found out that he can win with that team. Yeah, yeah. Just think yeah. if they give him another piece with Siakam. You know what I mean? He already got it. What's the boy, the boy that's hurt now? He ain't even playing for Toronto. He really good. Black dude. Dang, I can't think of his name. OG. And, OG. And, he not and even and playing no, right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah, a he yeah, big yeah. time. And he not even playing right now. So he like, bro, I'm at a team where I can win. And I can, I can be the LeBron of the East now. Mm, facts. And now guess what? Golden State about to be broken up now. Bro, I can win this thing again. So and the thing about it is that, but you hit, crew, you rushing, you 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 are crushing nationwide's Laker hopes right no, now. No, 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 nah, 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 I didn't say nothing bad about the Lakers. <laughs> no, no, no. If, like, if, he wants Kawhi on the Lakers. If Kawhi don't come to the Lakers, I would rather for him stay in Toronto. I, I don't see. So he don't come west. I, I don't see. Him stay east. Yeah. We get AD and we be good. I, I just don't see Kawhi joining with LeBron. I don't think he that type. Of no, dude. I don't see him joining. He like a one man band. I'm good if he stay in Toronto because you know. he in the east. Yeah. I'm yeah. good with that. I, I think we're, I think the Lakers holding they have more on this AD trade. Man. Like we had to get that. AD. They get they have to. Yeah. They didn't they didn't put too much eggs in that basket not to get that yeah. thing right now. If he went west, he would go to the Clippers. That, I mean I that's what he been saying the whole time. I'm saying I want him stay in Toronto. So he's staying in Toronto, bro. I see it, man. I, I don't see him. The only thing I can think of is his wife don't like it. Kawhi got I don't a even wife? know if he got oh, a he wife. Got a, he, no, got he got an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> he, got, he got an old lady. Beyonce I just said wife. Kids. Something. He got, yeah, he got something. A lady okay. and two kids. Bro. Yeah, like, and, a, and a suburban from the 90s. And a robot. suburban at night uh, with 20 foes. <laughs> 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 uh, he got an old lady. So, only way I can see him leave if his old lady really don't like Hey, babe, it's too cold. I don't like these people. I don't like Tim Hortons. And I don't like Drake. Tim I don't like Hortons. Drake. Right. I like Meek Mill. I don't like. She might. If she from Philly, they might leave. Yeah. They just text each other. They don't even fucking text. Right, right. <laughs> Make weird sex noises and shit. Nah, they, they, they communicate with emojis, man. He just send her pictures and smiles and stuff. It gifts. Or whatever, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> boy, you sound like I'm over here, boy. Yeah, so. Y'all got anything else, man? Anything else we didn't hit? Nah, oh, shit, man. What? Calgary. Oh, Canada? Boy, listen, when I played in Canada, that's the most fun I ever what had. What city you say? Calgary. 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 It's in Al- <laughs> the province of Alberta. I thought that was in it's Jerusalem. Oh, 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 oh. Calgary. He went to Calgary. He went to Calgary. Yeah. Okay. No, Calgary was amazing, on, man. When I was up there, uh, we went to a great cup. We won a great cup, man. I mean, bro, the fans are like college fans, bro. It was amazing, bro. 
the food was good. You know I me, mean? I'm always going to talk about food. <laughs> about Jerusalem. <laughs> I, I heard it was Calvary. I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> Stupid, man. Is this so, Easter Day? Right, right. <laughs> right, right. So, anyways, thank you for joining the I show, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank y'all for thank having you, me, man. Make sure y'all subscribe, listen, Podbeam, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Google Podcasts. I always miss that one. I'm Johnny Will, J Will underscore Graham. I'm signing out. This is Nationwide Nate. I'm out. This is Father. It's Cardiac Cage, man. And Nation, thanks for coming through. We appreciate it. I hey, mean, I appreciate y'all for having me, man. Oh, yeah. All right, we go. Let's see y'all in the next one. Get the put it up for my seeds. Put it up. No care for the IG disease. Do anything for club. They do anything for club. Do anything for club. They do anything for club. Do anything for club. They do anything for clout, do anything for clout huh. Bitch, watch your mouth, watch. bitch, stay in your place Play. Bitch, get out the way, Move. my bitch on your ass, Kim K yeah. No disrespect, the nah. nigga be trippin', but we love, yeah Swappin' that cost on my bitch, I bought her the limo, she bought me the race Swap it. Practice, 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 make perfect, nigga, it's never too late Never, never, never I see this out of the snake, I take the soul out the snake Then I see the bills up out of the bank, the blog and the media